Hello, good morning everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, you've joined us today again, hello, um, for our fifth episode of Animal Centre Live here at West Suffolk College. Um, my name is Sarah, I'm Head of Animal Studies at West Suffolk College um, and we've got Abby and Craig again today. Um, our video today, please don't bite me. <laughs> so our video today is all about environmental enrichment. And enrichment is really, really important. Um, it's a great way of getting animals or keeping animals busy. Um, and obviously, while we haven't got any students here, the animals aren't doing what they would usually do. So it's really important for us to be able to keep them nice and busy. So we've all been really busy this morning making lots of toys and things for the animals. And we're going to show you how to make some of the bits as well. Um, I've got a rat trying to climb on my shoulder. Mona. This is Mona. Mona. So what we've been making today for the rats, I don't know how Mona will feel about this, is uh, pine cones. You can't really carry that off. And um, <laughs> what we've done is literally so easy, and you guys can do this at home for all of your rodents. Um, so this is a pine cone, and in this pine cone we've got peanut butter. Um, we buy peanut butter that doesn't have any sugar or salt in it, um, and no palm oil either, because we love the orangutans, and we don't want anything, we don't want to add to the, the terrible things that happen to them. Um, in this pine cone, I don't know if you can see very well, we've got uh, chopped apricots, we've got sultanas, we've got raisins, and we've also got lots of bird seed on there too. And it's just normal bird seed that you can buy from the supermarket, um, nothing special. And as you can see from Mona, she, well, she's run off with a big chunk of it. Um, but we've actually made quite a few because we've got eight rats in here. We'll see if anybody else wants to um, come and have a go. Hello. So we'll just put them on the floor. Um, so this is the pot. Um, what we've done is actually some of them don't have any peanut butter or any seeds in uh, because it's really important that we try and replicate what would happen in the wild as best as possible. So obviously in the wild they don't get a reward every time they try and eat. So we're trying to replicate that here. So I'm just going to put some of them around the enclosure a little bit. I'll turn you around so you can see. No one's awake yet. Hello. Do you want to come and have a look? Oh, you see the naked rats hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Come and have a little look. They're in the big house. Hello. Come, what do you think of that pine cone? Maggie. Maggie. Um, obviously, they've only just woken up, so it's quite a big ask for me to... This one's... That's a winner one, that one. Put that up there. Um, there's Mona. What are you up to, little madam? <laughs> Come and have a look. Yes, I've put millet on there as well for you. You're supposed to be eating the pine cones that we've lovingly made this morning, though. Um, <laughs> just dragged it in. You just dragged it inside your little house. You're supposed to share, honestly. Uh, morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us again today. It's really exciting for us as a team to come back and see you all. Um, so Susanna's asking, would that be okay for hamsters? Absolutely. You probably wouldn't want to um, do as many because obviously we've got eight rats, so we've done eight pine cones. Maybe reduce the amount um, of and maybe not use peanut butter. Maybe morning, Abby. Maybe you've let some um, vegetables just because peanut butter's quite, quite fatty, isn't it? Yeah. Rats um, tend to have a higher fat diet than, than hamsters. So I've, just, I've hung up some millet around as well, so I'm just going to hang this one up as well, somewhere a bit higher maybe. You can see, oh, there's another ratty up there. Um, so you can see from the rat enclosure today. Wow, that wasn't very successful, was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, that one's trying to drag that pine cone in there. Here, it's a woolly. So this is what they're trying to do, store it for later. Yeah, they're super <laughs> cute, aren't they? Um, so let's get up, turn around. See if I can come out now, leave my measuring jug. Um, so we're gonna look at lots of different animals today. Um, we're gonna, ooh, Thank you. Um, so we're going to be looking in the mammal room to start with, because I know a lot of you last week were asking us about our rabbits and things like that. So we're going to have a look at those today as well. We're also going to have a look in the nocturnal room next door at the sugar gliders and the Gambian pouch rats. Um, and then we're going to go to the exotics room. And if the signal permits it, we're going to go outside to the goats again as well. Um, will we see the gerbils again this week? If we've got time, we'll definitely bring them over to you. Um, so wanted to do um, a big hello to a few people this morning. Um, a big hello to Creighton St Mary Primary School. I had a really lovely message from um, one of my colleagues here actually who's... Um children go to that school they're doing a fantastic project at the moment on conservation um, so we really wanted to say hello to them um, and you know hope that our videos are helping a big hello to Lily Isaac and Georgia good morning um, and then we also had a really lovely message from Jamie and Morgan 
um, about guinea pigs. And that's where I thought we'd start now. I'll just turn you around so you can start, so you can see Craig. Um, morning, Craig. So um, we had this lovely message from Jamie and um, Morgan just asking about guinea pigs. They've got their own guinea pigs uh, called Ant and Deck, I think it was. Um, and they wanted to know like what kind of things that we do for our guinea pigs enrichment-wise. So you can see in here, hello, boys. That's Ron over there. Um, you can see they have lots of um, apple branches at the moment for chewing on because obviously their teeth continually grow. So it's really, really important. Um, can we see the giant African land snails? Yes, Victoria, we are. Um, and Aidan, we are actually going to do some enrichment for the African land snails, which uh, people forget that um, invertebrates need enrichment as well. Um, so Abby and Craig at the moment, you can probably see, it looks a bit crazy, doesn't it? But we've just bought some spring greens, which are brilliant for guinea pigs. Um, and we're just tying them up. Um, looks like they're going to play limbo, but they're not. They're not that tall. <laughs> um, so basically, they, can get, they have to stand up a little bit to eat them, which is really different to how we'd usually feed them, because obviously we usually put it on the floor. So it's really good to, to mix things up a little bit. Go for the jump out. <laughs> you can't get out now, Craig. It's all right. <laughs> so we'll just have a quick see what how they're doing. Look, they're doing brilliant, aren't they? Hi, Kobe and Blake. Good morning to you. Um, so when it comes to enrichment, there's five different types. There's lots of categories. Um, the first type is called occupational, and it's basically about occupying them, making sure they're really busy so they're not getting bored. Because unfortunately, when animals get bored is when they tend to, you know, unfortunately hurt themselves um, or maybe even each other. Uh, the second one's called cognitive, and it's about providing lots of mental challenges. So you can see from this one, because it's quite high, they're actually Brilliant. using um, their back legs a bit more, and they're using the bridge to stand on as well. Daisy's getting quite frantic, <laughs> as you can see everyone. So Daisy's this grey one here, and she's the dominant female, so she's obviously getting quite frantic at the fact that everyone else is... <laughs> Go on, Daisy, you can get in there. Um, so the third type is called novelty, and that's all about... Um, sort of encouraging exploration and curiosity. So sometimes putting in really weird items that you wouldn't usually think about with your animals um, can actually encourage them to, you know, to enrich, it enriches their lives a bit more. Um, the next one's called co cooperative, and it's about encouraging them to undertake teamwork. So um, me and Abby were talking about this earlier, and we see that quite a lot in primates, don't we? Yeah, um, and rats as well. We used to uh, do like termite mice. work together to sort of like get this nuts and seeds and stuff through the maze and they'd have to like push it up so it took quite a long time to make. Yeah it does um, isn't it? They would have to work together. Um, Caitlin where do we get the leaves from? We just buy them from Tesco at, um, Asda sorry I went this morning on my way in they're just called spring greens they come in a double bunch and they're quite cheap actually mm. um, but all of our animals love spring greens so everything in the mammal room um, and also the goats absolutely love them too we have to um, split them up a little bit for the goats because obviously they don't have top teeth. Um, right, so the last type of enrichment is called emotional, and this is the one that we use quite a lot because it encourages responses through senses. So it's things like, um, you know, food-related, sense of smell, touch. Um, so we're going to be doing lots of these today. There we go, guinea pigs. <laughs> Kobe says the black and white guinea pig um, looks yeah. like... Well, her name's Tulip, but he thinks maybe we should call it Kung Fu because she looks like a panda. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good oh, name. Look, look, they pulled one off. Oh, there we go. Look, teamwork together. They've managed to pull one down. There we go. So that's our guinea pigs. Um, thank you so much to Jamie and Morgan who sent us a message. And if you guys want to send us a message to suggest anything, please do. Um, just pop us in a message on this page and we'll try and do whatever we can to, um, you know, improve your Wednesdays, really. We like our Wednesdays, don't we? Right, so we're joining Abby now. And the famous chickpea. So let's have, let's have a quick look at chickpea. Morning, chickpea! So I'll get around yes, so what are we doing today for no, hamsters? This is stuff. I just wanted to, sorry, talk a little bit about safety first with enrichment, um, which is obviously not everyone's favourite subject. But um, the things that I've been making today, I've been using glue and tape. So just make sure that you're using a non toxic glue. So any PVA glue should be absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, and then tape. We, we tend to use paper tape. Um, that's also non-toxic glue on there because obviously the animals will probably gnaw on it. Just need to make sure that's safe. Obviously use your equipment safely. <laughs> the professors yeah. trying to get out of the enclosure. Oh, yeah. Use your equipment safely. Um, and just make sure if there's anything like uh, safety pins or um, anything like um, 
staples or anything like that. Yeah, know, absolutely. Know, Especially if you're using edges, cardboard. If you're making something that potentially might have rough edges, then. Yeah. So I've done lots of different <clears> types of the ritual today. So I've done food things, but I've also done things to, but like, to stimulate their cognitive, so their, um, their like, brain, or intelligence. Yeah, cognitive. So this um, is all for hamsters, but obviously you could use it for gerbils, couldn't you? Yeah, gerbils. Some Mice. Rolling, really. You can make a bigger version of this for the rats. So I just literally made a maze here so what i did was cut the top of the box off as you can see i've drawn like what i wanted the maze to look like and just simply just stuck it on what and you've what, been buying from super drug abby yeah, yeah. <laughs> what i'll do is i'll put a couple of mealworms which are chickpeas absolute favorite yeah things. absolutely so i you know hamsters are omnivorous so it's really important to give them lots of different food um, um helen's joined us she's very happy we're talking about health and safety oh, nice. <laughs> um, and then as you can see look she's going through the maze now she's sniffing go chickpea um, go you know i could put some scents there so i could rub a bit of lemon juice on there or um use some um, herbs to rub on there to try and encourage scent and as you can see she's going to come out the end and get her reward Whoa, so, yeah, there you go. so that was quite a simple maze you can obviously make them a little bit more difficult oh chickpea so she's loving that um Ooh. some other um enrichments i'm just going to quickly have you finished yeah so i'll pop her back up um, morning, Katie and Holly. Um, does our animal life happen every day? No, it doesn't. We just do Wednesdays at the moment because we have 160 animals here at the college. Um, so it does take us a lot of time to um, look after them. So unfortunately, we don't get time to do it every day. We'd like to, obviously, because it's nice to contact the outside world yeah, because yeah, yeah. we, um, you know, obviously we, we get to see each other, which is nice, don't we? Um, but Wednesdays are our live day. So please do um, keep joining us. Um, morning to my sister, Oakley, Tony and Con. Ray, joining us from South Africa. Okay, some other environmental enrichment, like just something simple like this, an old flower pot, just cut a hole, you can use that as a bed. You know, that's easy Perfect. to clean, I've just made sure there's no sharp edges. Um, using... Um, Morning Shelby. Morning um, Owen. All of the um, lollipop sticks, so as it's been hot, maybe you've saved them, but if not, you can yeah. purchase just um, the uh, ones that haven't been used. And all I've done here is simply stick them together like a ladder, um, I'll put this in the enclosure, it acts as two different things here, so it can be like a little um, ladder, if she goes up it, she's going to sniff it and probably chew it, um, and also a tunnel as well, so that's just what do you think, environmental Chickpea? enrichment, hopefully. She's like, like no, I, I don't, up here. yeah, up. you want to just disappear, Chickpea, yeah, don't you? <laughs> so chickpea lives in our nocturnal room so obviously um she's used to flipped lighting so she's obviously not um she's usually awake right now so she's a bit more active oh <laughs> um, she's trying to escape yeah, that's very common that's yeah um, and then another thing i've made this is one i've made earlier put some do, treats do, in do. there for her this is amazing so this is basically like a, a treat ball I don't know if you can hear that. Chopping up the tube just like this. Oh, I've got peanut butter all over my hands. Um, and then you're simply just putting them together like this. And then when you've got to a point where you've um, put a couple together, there's a little hole, just make sure you put the treats in. And then, you know, that's really simple and easy to make. Other things you can do with tubes, you know, cutting holes, like obviously using scissors safely. Yeah. Like this. We love toilet along. rolls, don't we? Put some hay in there, have hay sticking out, chuck it in with the rabbits and get it. Really Perfect. Easy. And obviously, this is something we've struggled with, isn't it? Is um, getting toilet rolls and cardboard boxes because usually our students are fantastic at giving us um, cardboard boxes. Um, and the college usually gets lots of cardboard boxes for the canteen. But obviously, with the college being shut, um, we haven't got any boxes coming through. So, you know, if you guys want to make some enrichment um, and send us some pictures, that would be brilliant. Make, like, things that we've done today would be really, really good if you make it. And then send us some it. pictures. We'll, we'll post the best pictures. Absolutely, so. yeah. Um, another simple thing, just literally some old tissue paper, putting in some food, scrunching it up and then just giving it to the animal. Especially like rats and stuff, they like to forage for their food and it would obviously encourage um, sort of like that foraging. It's increasing the time that they're eating. So if we just gave them the food, just chucked it out for them every day, it, it's It wouldn't boring, take long, would it? And it wouldn't take long. No. Um, by doing something like this, it's just promoting natural behavior but you're also um chickpea you're crazy you're promoting natural behavior but you're also encouraging like that brain activity they would have in the wild research of the food absolutely and yeah, hamsters really walk nice. so many miles every night don't they for food yeah. but i can't remember how many is it five miles or something yeah, like that like um so you know 
it, obviously in a small enclosure, they're not going to get all of that exercise. So it's important that we encourage them to do different things with all of the... I need to get this peanut butter off my finger. It's doing my head yeah, in. They take seconds to make. Um, Stephen, we go live on a Wednesday at 11 a.m. So we do 11 till 12 every Wednesday. And we've been doing it for the whole of lockdown. It's day 38 today. Did you know that, Craig? No. Lockdown day 38. You look very excited about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, uh, we do it every Wednesday. I'll just, um, while, the rest, while those guys are just getting ready, because um, we're going to go through to the... Um, nocturnal room i'll just show you some of the other animals today because we've got some new people joining us today so these are our um dwarf rabbits they've um thrown their water at the floor i don't know why they've done that hello girls and guinness um and then we've got our three grumpy girls our lion heads hello i mean obviously they've got their big cardboard boxes they love them as well like little forts um, and then here's our favourite two. You probably shouldn't have favourite two, but honestly, look at them. So this is, hello, babies. This is Bernard and Blossom. Um, actually, if you love rabbits, our vets, which is the Bury St Edmunds Veterinary Centre, they're doing a fantastic um, session, I think, on Zoom about rabbits. Um, so if you look at the Bury St, Bury St Edmunds Veterinary Centre on Facebook, you'll be able to see when their Zoom um, session is. So if you've got rabbits at home, you can have a look. And um, Bernard's actually in their picture advertising it because look at him. You beautiful baby. And you, Blossom, you're beautiful too, aren't you? Yeah. Bernard, you lovely babies. They look like gremlins, don't they? Little gremlins. Um, yeah, so we'll see if the gerbils are awake, because somebody asked me about the gerbils today. Um, so nobody's, nobody's awake in the gerbil gerbil world today we can have a look and see if any to be honest with you the rodents take a bit of a while to um wake up but they usually sort of wake up once if oh there's a duprezy there um <laughs> hello so um if you've never seen a duprezy before they're also called fat-tailed gerbils they look like this they're very interesting looking cute little things very bitey though so they're not the students favorites oh we're going to come and have a look at a gerbil gerbly werbel Oh, here we go, look. So this is our, um, one of our gerbils. He lives by himself, because unfortunately, he's really mean to all of the other ones. I don't know why. But he's loving a, a millet spray there. So millet sprays, you know, people think of them and think of, of budgies, don't they? But um, morning, Denise. But yeah, we give them. Morning, Jamie, how are you? I hope you're well. Um, yeah, so we give them to all of our rodents. Can we see the chinchillas, Jade? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, little mousy. Hello. Good morning. I'm having a little drink. And yeah, look at the um, African Pygmy Dormouse enclosure. One of them was just out. Oh, the they are so super cute as well. Shame. And then we've got the obviously the dormice. Um, harvest mice. Harvest mice, sorry. Yeah, dormice down the bottom. Let's have a quick look and see if we can see some chinchillas before we... Um, we'll, we'll go round and come back again. It's, it's good. I'm getting some exercise today. Better than sitting on my computer all day. Um, I'm very grateful. Oh, here we go. Look. Hello. Oh, there we go. Can you see him? So he's just chilling on top of his box at the moment. So we've got four chinchillas and a daegu in here. Um, our daegu is called Beelzebub. Um, he lives with the chinchillas. I think he thinks he's a chinchilla. He's not, though. Um, what are they up to over there? I see you. Uh, here's Dolly. Good morning, Dolly. You cheeky monkey. Hello, you. Come on, then. Come and see me. Any of the enrichment we've shown you for roses, hey. obviously suitable for them, but just remember these guys can't have a lot of sugar, so lots of leafy greens. Yeah, same with the seeds, chinchillas. Yeah, like daegus are awesome. They are so super inquisitive. As well. Yeah, so this is Dolly. Um, they're, but they, like Abby said, super intelligent. They love being given things to do. Um, they absolutely love their wheel. They spend all of their time in the wheel. They, they do have two, but for some reason, there's always about three that try and squash themselves in there. <laughs> oh, well, it just doesn't really. Looking at the enclosure as well, actually, me and Craig on Monday. We saw it's not the very good in that way. We've been revamping a lot of the enclosures. Yeah, they look great. Um, we just um, increased the height, um, and we just simply use cable ties to attach the, the logs and make sure that it's secure. And obviously, we do that safety check every day. Oh, thanks, Gemma. Um, do you not like Craig's hair as well, though? <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, see how. Yeah, like in here, we just so this. 
like in here is not as oh natural there's a naked as, um, rat oh next door so we did the sugar glider and the gambit hello enclosure yesterday but we want to make those, that room look a little bit more natural than in here can we see colin please yes we're going to go through to the exotics room we're just going to the um nocturnal room first to show you the sugar gliders there's another naked rat look hello so you can see the rats are absolutely loving their pine cones and you know going out and collecting pine cones is a really great way to get some exercise as well i don't know if you'd find any this time of the year mind you oh where are you going where are you going right let's go through to the nocturnal room um, so, where's my little list? I need that because I'm not forget what I'm doing. Um, so, we're going through to the nocturnal room. In there, we've got our sugar gliders and our Gambian pouch rats. Um, you guys can have a look and see what kind of enrichment we provide them. Obviously, they live in very big enclosures, so we've done quite a lot at changing those as well. One of the rats is literally making a nest as we Ooh, see. Uh... Hello, what are you doing? You've got a little bit of hay. So, this is a Gambian pouch rat. So, he is a giant rat. So let me step back so you can see their enclosure. So it is a very big walk for enclosure. Now, um, you know, before we got the Gambian pouch rats, we got the students to do lots of research for us because they are a big species um, and they do need a lot of enrichment to be kept busy. They're very intelligent. Like we said before, the army use them to smell, to sniff out IEDs, which is bombs. So they're super, super clever. Um, so it's really important we give them lots of stuff to do. Kobe says it's the try not to say or challenge. I say or all the time and I call all the animals monkeys as well, which isn't very accurate, is it? You are so cute. Ooh. You are so cute. So with the Gambian pouch rats, we don't actually do anything hands on with them. So you can see I'm not trying to stroke him. Um, and that's because this, this room we try and use as like a zoo room. So the students get used to what it would be like to work in a zoo. Um, we've also got the sugar gliders in here. You can see they're very busy. Um, they, um, they know we're in here, so they're expecting food. <laughs> so you can see their enclosures had a nice uh, change up as well. So something as simple as just changing up the enclosure, that is a good form of enrichment as well, because it changes, uh, changes the environment for them, so you know, they're not used to the same environment anymore. Um, so we've moved all of the perches and we've moved the, the sort of nest boxes, if you like, um, so it's just different for them. Um, we've got a question quickly, sorry to interrupt you, Craig, from Shelby asking why we're in the dark. Okay, so these animals um, prefer to come out at night time, uh, so when it is dark. Um, so with that in mind, if we left the light on in here like we would everywhere else, these guys wouldn't be active, so it would be really hard to, um, mm -hmm. to work with these um, and for the students to study them as well. So by flipping the sort of day and night cycle, it just means that we can see what these guys are getting up to uh, when they're... When they're, active, when they're active, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it helps us from a sort of health and husbandry point of view, and obviously it gives the students a chance to work with uh, sort of nocturnal species. And compared to sort of diurnal species, mm -hmm. there aren't that many, so the students are really lucky to get the opportunity to work with hey, baby. species that we've got in here. Oh, hello, cutie. Yeah, like Hannah said, um, they are nocturnal, you're correct. Um, so it's really, really important that we, you know, because we want the students to see them when they are active because, you know, the students use them for behaviour observations and things like that. So we have this flipped lighting. So it is red. Some places have blue. We went for red. And then when we leave in the evening, we flip it so it's um, like, you know, normal lights. So we're going to go in with the sugar gliders first. So Abby's just doing some finishing touches. So do you want to talk us through what you've done? Okay, so I have um, basically got some logs. I've drilled some holes. They're not all the way through. Um, so I'm going to try to encourage to um, get them to use their tongue um, and also just to, to forage. So these will be hanging up. Awesome. Uh, so they'll be using their strength to try and um, actually get down um, to the logs and obviously have stability. Um, using their cognitive ability, their, their intelligence to actually search for the food and then it's promoting natural behaviours. And we've just made up some of their forms part of their diet. It's called sticky fur. It's what we feed the crested geckos. It's got bee pollen, um, papaya, yeah, um, and just it's like probiotic, so it's really good for their gut as well. So I'm just literally, just simply, <laughs> just putting a little bit of it. What into are you the doing? <laughs> and then hopefully, um, Craig will be my grand assistant and help me put some in. Well, part of them also go to the enclosure. Let's see what they. They do try and jump on the door when you go in as well, don't they? Which isn't overly helpful. We end up with sugar gliders oh, on you. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Right, so Abby's... Literally sniffing. Thank you, 
Abby's a tree at the moment. Look at that sugar glider on your arm already. Um, they are, they're sneaky. They will test bite you to see if you've got food on your hands as well. So um, they don't bite hard because obviously they're just testing, but let's have a quick look. <laughs> they can smell it. Yeah. Sure. There we go. That's also a good response. You don't want them to be like, excuse me. Away you want them to investigate the, um, the device. It's about being curious, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, curiosity is a really great way to um, encourage, uh, in, you know, to enrich their lives as well. Uh, morning, Caitlin. We are going to go out to see the goats. We're going to do that last, though, because unfortunately the Wi-Fi at college cuts out sometimes when we go see the goats. So we're going to do that last. We've made some enrichment for the goats, actually. Um, so we do want to show them to you. What are you doing, cheeky? What are you doing, cheeky? Oh, you're so cute. Can't even stand it. Right, so we're... Oh, here we go. Oh, no, hang on. Abby had one on her head. It's quite standard. Here we go. Oh, what have you found? Perfect. That's exactly what it's like. You can see it's gripping on with its claws. So it's obviously going to wear down their claws as well. Using its tongue to get in there. So obviously in the wild, being sugar gliders, they would be using their tongues to get sap out of trees, wouldn't they? Yeah. So um, it's great to encourage that sort of behaviour. And insects as well. They absolutely love their insects. This one's just sniffly got some insects that have fallen out. <laughs> as you can see, they're also getting wary of the fact that it's moving around. So um, you need to make sure that we're promoting that sort of tree movement as well as they would in, in the wild, because obviously you don't want to have something static. Um, this is like encouraging. I've got another one. Um, morning, Nicole. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, you've got a cuddly sugar glider. That's cute. Oh, we didn't know what it was called until you came. Well, I'm glad that we've taught you something today because that's really, really important for us, which is why we really wanted to do a lesson today on enrichment because that is something we get the students to do on a regular basis, make different types of enrichment. And obviously, they're not here at the moment, so that's our job. There's a sugar glider here, look. He's being, being lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Pass you in. Here we go. Sorry, my camera skills are not as, not as good as everyone else's, but here we go. Here's one of them. Look, he's playing up with the camera. As you can see, they've got that little grease gland on the top of their head, so they scent marks, so they use scents as part of their um, enrichment, mm -hmm. so um, scent as part of their communication, sorry. So using scents for, and smell for um, enrichment would be really good for them because that would pr promote that. Uh, smelling and communication. So you can see he's enjoying that. Look, you can see he's using his tongue. And you can sort of see that skin membrane we've been talking about. Um, so that's what they do use to help them glide. Do we have sheep? No, we don't. Sorry, we do not have sheep. We do have uh, six lovely goats, which we're going to go see in a minute. Um, but, yeah. No sheep. No sheep. I'd like some sheep. I'd like... Well, we'd like everything, wouldn't we? But yeah. We have to Are you going to jump a... on me? Oh, look. Hang on, if I can turn it round. Got sugar glider <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, Posing for the camera. He's going to bite your thumb, isn't he? Yeah, he's definitely going <laughs> to bite me. I like, I like the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Move my thumb away. Look, just go with your mates. You're so sneaky. Look, he's going right up to the camera. Yeah, it's because he wants to eat my phone. He always does it. <laughs> Not that I take loads of pictures when I'm here. Oh, look, these two are going, really going for it. It's interesting that they want to do things together, isn't it, rather than, because we've obviously spread them out, and this is the important thing when you've got groups of animals, isn't it, is that there you, you provide lots of enrichment so they've all got equal opportunity to get to it. Um, can we come and visit after lockdown? So we're not actually open to the public, Gemma, I'm really sorry about that, but if you are a prospective student or you have someone in your family that would like to come and study with us, then the Animal Centre is open on open events so we can show off the Animal Centre to our students. We do, we are, we actually haven't, we moved here in June and we actually haven't had an Animal Centre grand opening and we really wanted to and um, we've all worked very hard to get the Animal Centre to where it is so we would love to show everybody it and, and anybody could come and have a look um, but obviously with lockdown we haven't had the opportunity to do that. Um, right, over to you Craig, what are you doing? Uh, so uh, what I've got over here is just some egg crate. Oh thanks Gemma. That we've just torn up, um, so what we're going to do for the gambling pouch rats is we're going to pop some mealworms in. So I've got three of them that Abby's already made for me. Morning, Lexi. Um, no, we don't have any bats. We actually did look at getting some um, 
fruit bats before we got the Gambian pouch rats, but we decided that we didn't think the enclosure was big enough. Um, so it's really important for us that we only house animals that we can, you know, comfortably and also so their welfare's at a high standard. Maybe I should go in so we're not yeah. looking through the... Go in. I don't know if that might upset them a bit, but... Right. So Craig is using insects today. Just in egg trays. And these egg trays we get with our insects as well. So we get our insect delivery from a company called Peregrine. Um, hello. What are you doing? So like Abby said, we're just sort of prolonging the amount of time it takes uh, for the animals to get their food. Because I'm sure we can all agree that if we just had our food in a bowl every day, it'd be quite boring. But by giving, giving the animals uh, different sort of different problems to solve, uh, it just m breaks their day up a bit more, uh, gives them something to do and you know, keeps their mind stimulated as well. Um, so yeah, and have a really good form of enrichment and something that's really, really simple um, and something that you can sort of apply to <laughs> small yeah. rodents as well. Oh, he's good. Yeah, well done. I think it's important to mention that not all enrichment has the sort of reaction that you might expect it to or you might want it to. Um, so Maybe you know. reactions are just as positive as positive. Yeah. yeah. Good boy, well done. That was a perfect demonstration there. Well done, mate. Good job. Yeah, so um, we've got two Gambian pouch rats, but the other one is very, very shy. So this one will come out when we're in here, and he's not really bothered about... Um, hello. Hello. Oh. Um, he's not really bothered about people, um, whereas the other one is quite shy, so we don't really see him. So me and Craig will get out now so that um, the other one can come out and enjoy the enrichment as well. Well, you'll eat it all. Yeah. That's why you always have... Abby, you've locked us in. <laughs> we'd, we'd like to come out, please. Awesome, thank you. Right, so next on our list is um, the exotics room. So we're going to go and have a look at, um, we're going to do some snake enrichment, some um, bearded dragon enrichment. Oh, that is bright. And we're going to do some um, well, uh, invert enrichment as well, which is really, really important. So um, we're going to start... Okay, so we're going to just um, have a quick look in here. So some people want to have to see Colin, actually. So I'm really distracted because somebody, um, a, a stranger has just turned up in the animal centre, which we um, obviously haven't... Who was that? <laughs> yeah, so a stranger just turned up in the animal centre. We should have locked the door, really. We usually do. Um, so some people were asking me about Colin. Um, so Craig has done an excellent job at changing Colin's enclosure. I don't know if you remember what it looked like before. Um, but he's made this fantastic climbing frame for Colin. Um, and he's done that by drilling bits of apple wood together. Um, and as you can see, Colin loves it because he's up high. And it also means that he's up a lot higher. He can get to the um, UV light, which is up here. So he's got two UV strip lights. Um, and that's really important to avoid things like metabolic bone disease. Hello. Um, so he can get higher, which means he's getting a higher concentration of UV. Um, he's also got his heat bulb, but it's ceramic, so it doesn't produce any light. Um, that means we can have it on at night time as well, but obviously we just have it on a lower setting. Yeah, Shelby, Colin's everyone's favourite. Look at him, he's so beautiful, isn't he? I um, See if I can open him so you can have a closer look. Ooh, I'm throwing keys around the place. Let's just have a quick look at, at Colin. I lost my sheet somewhere, Abby. I don't know what I've done with it. Hey, Colin, how are you? Good morning. And he's, he's definitely like a lot happier in there now. He's got some more height because they yeah. are boreal, so... <laughs> he's checking me out. He thinks we're crazy. He's right. Um, yeah, so Colin's enclosure's had a lovely uh, renovation. And even doing things like that, so changing the enclosure regularly is, is an important form of enrichment as well. Um, We've had that with the um, crested geckos as well. They've had a revamp of their enclosure, another frame ooh. made by Craig. Listen, I'll have to open that so we can actually um, see because I don't, it's a bit too um, condensation y, which is good because they have to have um, good humidity in there anyway. So, oh God, hi Lily. Oh, I'm glad you love Colin as well. Ah, here we go. Oh, I can see. Can you see? Hello. <laughs> can you see that? Those beautiful little eyelashes. Hello, you. And you can see his tiny little toe with all the little hairs on it, um, which are really, really useful for um, attaching themselves to glass and things like that and climbing. Awesome. And here's our Amazonian milk frogs. Hello, you lot. These are our adults. 
There we go. Right, I can't remember where we were going to start. We'll start with Abby. Hello. Hi. What are you doing? Um, so I was going to do um, another time feeder for the bearded dragon. So um, this could be good because obviously they're um, so they are desert animals, they usually only eat when their, their body temperature, or they'll eat and then raise their body temperature, so for us, we um, have all of our thermostats on timers, so in the morning they tend to not um, be as warm as they would in the evening, so maybe less likely to eat. Um, so by having a timer <laughs> feeder, you could put this in last thing, and it means that they're, they're going to be occupied... Doing? Um, it could also be good for an animal that's choppies. nocturnal, so like we were discussing before, we're only here till five o'clock, but a nocturnal animal, that's potentially when they're getting up, so a time to could be really, really useful for them. So what I've got is a yoghurt pot with some holes in the bottom and a little suction cup, and I've just put some paper in there so they don't all come out at one time. I'm using mealworms, so just chuck a few in there. Let's have a look in there. Just chuck a few Ooh, in yeah, there. Oh yeah, lovely. And I'm going to wet it, not with my saliva. Why are you wetting it? Um, just wetting the suction Oh, pack. sorry, I thought you meant you were wetting the tissue paper. Wetting the suction hopefully they will... We've decided Ooh. to use these guys. Oh, look, one's fallen out. And they've just noticed it. Look, he's totally all going for it. They're going for it. <laughs> so they might just be waiting in that area for the other worms to come out. But, you know, that anticipation. Oh, look, he's trying to get up there <laughs> to get the worms. You can see that they're trying to come out. So you can see this is like a really easy thing to make, isn't it? And like even for, you could make it for if you've got rats and stuff like that as well, couldn't you? So as you can see, we're like really desperate for that. <laughs> and I know that it looks like it's unfair and you might um, put your human uh, emotions on it. You might be like, oh, but it's teasing, but it's not. Because obviously you think about in the wild, they wouldn't get fed every time or they don't eat constantly because they don't get the opportunity because obviously they've got to use their hunting skills. Um, and the mealworm is literally just coming out at the bottom. Oh, yeah. oh, and that's what they're desperate to get. So, yeah, this is... We're encouraging them to work for their food. Yes. Uh, which is really important. And obviously, this is a good form of exercise for them as well. And bearded dragons get fat. Oh, he looks at me like I'm... I'm sorry, but you do get fat. I mean... Very easily. Look at that there. podge. Yes. <laughs> fat boy. Fat girls. Are you going to get one? Shall I shake it a little bit? I feel like I've made it Maybe too hard. Out the paper. Mm. See, Abby's feeling guilty. Yeah. But then this is the thing, like, this is what enrichment is. If you make something and it's too hard, then you learn from it. If you make something and it's too easy, you learn from it. Yeah. I used to be really mean when I worked with monkeys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that back on, I'll just hold it. I used to be really mean and try and get things that they couldn't solve and you could see them scratching their head. But, you know, that, that is a positive reaction as well because, you know, it's mimicking what they would have in the wild. You're really stimulating their brain and that's what we need to do. We need to make sure the animals are not bored so that they have the proper welfare that they need. They have the best life that they have, they can have. Yeah. So we'll um, fill that up again and, and stick it to the side and leave it. Oh, Abby's me worming all over the place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll stick that back on there so that they can um, have that throughout the day because that will keep them nice and busy. Um, I'm sorry, I've just shut it on you. Ah, Craig, do you want to teach us about how we can provide enrichment for snakes? Yeah, um, so obviously we have a lot of rodents um, here. Um, unfortunately, that's what snakes like to eat. Um, so what we've got is some rodent bedding, which does smell quite, quite rodent-y. Um, so what we're going to try and do is make like a, a sort of scent trail. Um, so if we start with the butter, yeah. we'll be quite active and we'll try... Uh, so what, what we suggest if you've got snakes is you take them out of the enclosure first to do scent trails, because obviously you don't want your hands in there when you... Um, yeah, don't want your hands in there when you're messing about with um, mouse yeah. smell. I mean, he might stay in his ca in his cave, so you might be able to put it round the um, other bits with, while he's still in there. I don't know. As you can see, this is another one of Craig's wonderful frames that he's made. So yeah, let's have a quick look. So obviously, you can see um, Craig's made some more height for him, and he absolutely loves it as well. He's always using it. Yeah. Oh, Aidan and Owen, we'd love for you to send us some cardboard boxes and toilet roll cheese, but we're actually having a real issue with getting deliveries at the moment because. Um, 
we're not um the college is shut so and the animal center is is right at the back of the college um so we are having a bit of a, a trouble getting delivery so to be honest with you i don't know if they would get here <laughs> um but thank you so much we really appreciate that that would be lovely um when we start up again we'd love it for people to send us items that they um perhaps have for their animals that they don't use anymore so we're always happy to take old donations toys. yeah old kids toys tea, tea um, towels hammocks yeah pig bags as well because they make great um they make great little um beds as well oh here we go amazon oh amazonian milk frog froglets frog 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 froglets um so you can see these guys are all doing really well um we've still got 50 uh, which is crazy really 50 frogs um they are super cute though aren't they super cute how many lizards do we have um Three, four, it's, so this is ghost we can have a quick look at ghost while we're well he's lovely he's one of our rescues hey ghost so you look at his beautiful eyes so ghost is a rat snake um so he has these really beautiful big eyes um and they're kind of blue i don't know if you can see that my phone isn't doing very well at focusing um and obviously he's a wriggly wriggly one <laughs> had to refrain from saying yeah. he's a wriggly one um so yeah he's he's super active though isn't he like um he's always out and the students really love him as well he's a firm favorite technically not an arboreal species but you see we have encouraged height in his enclosure so just because an animal doesn't necessarily exhibit those behaviors in the wild you can't necessarily provide them a hundred percent their natural environment so you need to think of other ways to provide him exercise so started to borrow as well down there. yeah so you can see craig's actually putting the bedding in if you've got like if your rats if you've got a snake and you've got someone who's got rats that sleep in like a hammock you could just literally rub the hammock around the enclosure rather than putting it in if you didn't want to make it messy but we'll put ghost in and see what he thinks see if he's um awake enough today Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. So he's got this holding container, which we know doesn't look um, aesthetically pleasing, but it's really important. It's full of sphagnum moss, which you can see, um, and we make it really damp in there. Um, so he's got somewhere he can go to shed. Um, it just helps with his shedding. Um, and obviously snakes shed in one go if they're healthy. So it's something we like, you know, we want to encourage. He's going for that bit there. Well, I don't know if you can see. He's, he's under this... Uh, there we go. Hello. So you can see the, the tongue coming out and it's forked, so it splits off in sort of two different directions. And that just helps him really sort of locate where, where the source of the smell is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, in, in other places that I've worked, uh, so with Komodo dragons that are reptiles as well, you can use like a blood trail. Um, so it does exactly the same mm -hmm. job. And at the end of it, they can get a nice slab of meat, whether that be horse or, or deer. And again, with big cats, you can do a similar thing with uh, sort of blood tickles as well. So uh, Chicken broth. Or chicken broth, yeah. So although we're doing this uh, for snakes, there are lots of different other ways that you can get the same sort of goal from it. So it's not just for snakes, it can be for pretty much any sort of carnival. Yeah, we're going to do some scent trailing with the invertebrates as well. We're going to be using herbs for that, which I know sounds bizarre, but um, you guys know from eating, like, you know, rosemary, um, basil, it's really, really heavily scented. So um, we're going to try doing that with the inverts to see if they like those. And some of these animals what have doing, a Colin? stronger sense of smell for us. So yes. in terms of the, the snake, um, their vision is not as, as um, strong, but their sense of, like, smelling... Yes, they have a special Jacobson's organ, which they use to help process smells. So it's really, really important. Um, so we've got a few different herbs. I don't know what, what we've done with them. Yeah. What do we do with the herbs? They might be in the fridge. Um, unfortunately, we've been um, doing stuff all day, so it's all a bit... This is the true of what an animal centre should look like, though. It's always messy. Like you should, We should always clear up after ourselves, but looking after animals is messy work. I know that is. Sugar glider. Um, Sugar glider cube. Right, so we've got mint. Can everyone try some mint? Because that's um, super, super smelly, isn't it? Um, and because we've got it from supermarket, it comes already bunched up, so you can just use that to drag around the enclosure. So we're going to have a go at dinner with the snails, if I can find a key. Um, the students aren't even here for us to, to moan about the key, so I don't know what's happening. Oh, they've been, like, <laughs> they've been like that the whole time. So we've got four... Um, We've got four giant African land snails in here, and they're towards the back at the moment. Um, so what we can do is literally just rub, because obviously you know that mint produces oil, so you can just rub it 
on the enclosure. Um, and this will help to give them something to, you know, something to go around the enclosure and something completely different. And like Abby said earlier, it might make them a bit um, unsure to start with. Um, but that's a good um, behaviour for them to demonstrate as well, isn't it? And we'll just do the same for these guys. Oh, here, it's actually. always good to see if animals react like as they would in the wild. So, um, well, again, when I've worked with primates, um, those um, snake toys that are plastic, that when you hold them, they sort of do this sort of... I don't know if anyone remembers those, but yeah. um, we've got one of those out before to see if the, if the monkeys will react to a snake as they would. And they will alarm call, and the rest of the group will react. And obviously, yes, you're providing them a negative stimuli, but you are encouraging a positive behaviour um, and, and a natural behaviour. So it's awesome. So these are one of our absolutely gorgeous domino cockroaches. So, oh, everyone's not... Um, no, not people fair. are sad. Oh. People are sad about. Oh, don't be sad. He's look at, look at his and worried, head. but they're he's awesome. Worried. He's super cool. Very um, he's very quick. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we've got a few of these. So they are domino cockroaches, obviously because of their pattern. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna pop him on here so you can so see. You can hopefully he'll. Yeah, mate. They're not overly keen on being held, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, we've got a few in there. They're all, obviously all hiding underneath the tree stump. Well, there's another one there. Oh. Burrowing, oh, it's, burrowing. it's just under, <laughs> just come up from burrowing. Who? So these are one of the um, nicer of the looking of the cockroach species. Or, yeah. yeah. Species. He's definitely thinking. They are cool, Stephen. Yes, they are. Yeah. He's definitely on the branch, as you can see. He's definitely, like... Curious. Okay, so we haven't, I don't think we've shown you the hermit crabs much. Abby's favourite is the hermit crabs. Um, so, all, all hermit oh, I don't crabs know if you can see. Actually, yeah, if you can open that. We'll show you our Pac-Man frog. Um, he's really funny. I can see him. He's just kind of buried himself. Hello, you. Do, 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 do. Um, so Pac-Man Frog because he's got a giant mouth and he will bite you, won't he, Craig? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Colin's like, please let me out, enrich me. So this is the other thing as we were talking about as well as human interaction with animals is also enriching for the most part, isn't it? So yeah. um, let's have a quick. You've got a key. Can you um, open Colin? I mean, Colin's very, very into having um, a cuddle. Aren't you, Colin? Ha <laughs> Colin, do you not want to see Craig today? Do you not want to see Craig? Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Gotta take your tail with me, haven't I, Colin? You woolly. Right, okay, just gonna just gonna hang there for a minute. Colin is dancing. Yeah, well when they walk, they do this sort of shake. Um let's see if we can. Are you right now? Happy that you're out. So Colin's just going to hang on my arm while we um, talk to Abby about hermit crabs. Hi. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> Hi. Um, hermit crabs are all, so you can sort of see, this is a purple pincer, Caribbean purple pincer hermit crab. Um, so they're, they're actually all are, are, um, born in, in the sea and then land hermit crabs, they'll come onto the shore um, and then their, their gills metamorphosize, so that means change, to be able to go from breathing water to breathing air. But they do need a very moist enclosure. So if you do have hermit yeah. crabs, lots of spraying. And we recommend that you use aquarium salt with um, uh, dechlorinated water or distilled water um, to spray the enclosure. And as you see, we, we try to replicate their natural environment. So it's usually sandy with soil. Um, we provide them a salt bath fresh water quick. and then I actually make their food, it's got um, a combination of um, nuts, uh, oats, uh, tanny, um, uh, nuts for the Dried tannin. fish. Yeah, but... dried fish, cuttlefish bones, so they are um, a species that needs to have a high calcium diet. Don't know if he's going to come out. Well, we could put him on the side, and um, Colin's being super helpful. I'm having to like keep my elbow in the air because they, he's um, they molt, and you have to provide them with lots of shells. So you've seen the enclosure provide them with lots of shells because they do actually change. What I will do is post the video that I've got of one of them changing because you can see their little bum and it wiggles and it just looks so funny. Um, Chris, don't encourage me to get more tattoos. Well, 
spare house. They are very particular. Where did you put him? Is it? Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you'd um, I thought you were putting I him in there. I think he'd come out, but I don't know. He might come out if you put him back inside the um. The when I'm touching thingy. he's not really moving, so I don't know if he's about to go into a mark. Hey, Colin, what's up? He Everybody says hello. Happy Wednesday. Hmm. Not impressed, are you, mate? Not impressed. Where did you put him? He's there. So he, he's actually like quite in his shell and he was looked like he was burrowing. So hermit crabs molt, so not their shell, their actual exoskeleton, all the hard part yeah. the outside. They molt it every 18 months, um, around every 18 months. Um, so you might be going through that early stage of that. Um, speaking of molting, Clarice is going through. Oh, I won't show her calling because that might upset her. Um, but Clarice is going through. Yeah, if you could, because he's actually hurting my arm. My arm's not really meant to be in that position. Sorry, Colin. Um, so this is Clarice. So she's a different type of chameleon. So she's a Yemen chameleon. Um, so she is. She doesn't obviously have the the bright blue or the orange. Um, and she's got that lovely white streak along her. Um, but she's shedding at the moment, which is why she's got that bit of white on her face. Um, she's also not as keen on people as Colin is. Um, she's getting better, um, but she's, yeah, not overly, not overly keen. She's, she's always sort of giving me the eye because she wants me to go away while she's trying to eat, usually. Um, and then we've got our, another set of frogs in here. We've got um, snowflake white tree frogs, but they're usually quite good at hiding. I don't know if anyone can spot them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, fish. Not everybody's... Um, favorite we've got um a very small selection currently but it's something that we're looking at changing for next year so we're getting more so these are gold barbs um these are our original fish we've had them for a, a very long time and um, we've also got a tank of tetra so we've got black widow tetra we've got uh, lemon tetra we've got um i think that might be it in that one yeah. and then we've got some I think I think that's a penguin tetra some neon tetra or cardinal tetra and then we've also got a leopard uh sorry zebra danio and then down the bottom, we've got our African short clawed frogs. Look at his little choppies. There's two in here. Hello. So we've just changed their enclosure to this and totally like revamped it. So that's another form of enrichment. Yeah, so these guys are interesting. Then we've got angelfish as well. Oh, you grumpy thing. He's the boss. I don't know if you can tell. Look at that lovely dorsal fin. Can you see the bristle nose in there? Uh, there is a bristle-nosed catfish in there somewhere, but I can't see him today. Um, so you can see, obviously, we've got um, three angelfish. They do get quite big angelfish, and they are a type of the cichlid family. So they are quite aggressive. Um, so it's not best to keep them with anything else, to be honest with you, because they are fin nippers. They've got this forward-facing mouth. I don't know if you can see. Um, it's kind of angled upwards, which means it's good for nipping other fish. Can As you can see, yeah, he's being really mean to this other one. May. It's not nice, is it? So we might have to move him and put him in a different tank. Um, but when it comes to fish enrichment, it can be quite difficult to provide enrichment to fish because obviously you think about putting them in a tank and just forgetting about it. Um, apologies for the, for the algae on the bottom there, but because they're opposite all of the tanks, um, the UV light encourages algae growth. So it's something as well that I didn't think about when I designed the animal centre. I'm only human. Um, so yeah, when we come to enrichment for aquatic species, obviously you can change up the enrichment within the enclosure so craig's been doing that this week so you can see at the moment these are guys have got some vegetation they can hang in um they've also got this piece of mapani wood which you have to soak for quite a long time before you put it in because if not it turns the water red um, another great way to provide fish enrichment is to give them live food now you can't really chuck mealworms in there we've tried and they just sort of float precariously on the top um but you can buy things like artemia brine shrimp blood worm tuber flex worms um and they come in brine water so you just have to put them in a sieve and give them a rinse because you don't want to put salt water in your freshwater aquarium um, and then you can pop them in and the live food helps to stimulate their natural behaviors it can make them obviously they have to hunt they're doing lots of swimming um, so it's a really good form of enrichment for them. Um, it's also good for digestion as well, live food. It helps to push through their digestive system. Um, so really important if you've got a fish that's constipated or it looks really bloated, uh, live food is a great way to, to help promote that. Um, fish are a really big passion of mine. Um, it's what I teach here. So I do aquatics and exotics. Um, so, you know, I could talk to, to you about fish all day, but it's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? Um, Colin is a panther chameleon. Somebody asked me what type of chameleon Colin is. Colin is a panther chameleon. Very handsome one. 
A very handsome one indeed, we'll yeah. Some, um, some locust in with him. Oh, we can go and have a look. Good sauce of enrichment. Still doing their, <laughs> their thing. They're still on, hanging around under the pot, look. They are taking it in turns as well, which is quite cute. Thank you. Um, when did you get the fish and how old are they? Well, the fish really, really range, yeah. We, um, we actually rescue quite a lot of our animals. So the um, frogs, the, the, which people do find a bit um, unattractive, they were rescued from, um, what was that? What was it called? Marlowe's. Marlowe's Pet Store, which unfortunately shut down, but the guy there had had them for a long time um, and asked us if we'd take them. For about 30 years as well. Yeah, so. so he'd had them for a really long time. So we've, I can't remember what their names are. They've got their. They're named after the two puppet, the two um, grumpy puppets from the Muppets, the ones that are always on the balcony. Um, what other fish can you have with goldfish? Good question, Chris, because they're cold water fish. You can get something called a Hong Kong plek, um, which is a bottom feeder. That's great to have with um, goldfish. Uh, the difficulty with goldfish is they do get quite big and I think people don't realise so they keep them in small tanks and then they outgrow them quite quickly. Um, yeah, so it's quite tricky and with the frogs as well, just in case anyone's wondering, they don't have any fish with them because they would eat them. So these guys, when they're little, you can keep them with fish, but when they've got bigger mouths, I don't know if I can, you can't really see his mouth very well, but when they've got bigger mouths, obviously they can fit fish in them and they're you can see these hands he's got his hands are like spades he will um they go across the floor and they kind of s shovel things into their mouths um which is really funny to watch isn't it um but they will shovel they will shove fish in there as well so it's, it's best not to keep fish with these guys um which is why they're in here completely by themselves uh, do we have a giant millipede well i have a funny story for you joanna because we don't have a giant millipede but i'm an idiot <laughs> and i bought a bumblebee millipede where is he? I bought a bumblebee millipede because I thought it would be cool. They are stripy um, and I thought he'd be a really lovely addition. So let me show him to you. You'll be amazed. He's absolutely tiny. Yeah, so this is And he's done like no growth whatsoever either. So this is what we have to do to check that obviously he's still... So this is how small he is. He's somewhere in this pot. It's and a three person job, this one. It's a, yeah. I mean, I'm just here to supervise. <laughs> and he is the same colour as the floor, which is great as well, isn't it? It's like a greeny... He is stripey, which is a, a slight indication, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so Joanna, I did buy a millipede. I got really excited about it. So did Abby. And then, unfortunately... He's literally probably about a quarter of the size of a little finger. He's he absolutely is... tiny. I can't even find him. He might be in all of this, to be honest. Yeah, I can't even find him oh, right now. Oh, did there? you find him? There? Oh, there, oh, there he is, look. Here we go. So this is a bumblebee millipede. He's grown quite a lot, actually. Um, so you can see bumblebee because of... <laughs> <laughs> this is my finger but, uh, next yeah. to him, just for reference. So yeah, me and Abby have a really terrible and uh, habit of buying things and forgetting what's or not really adhere, well reading the size. And when he came, he was absolutely ugh, ridiculously small. He's still ridiculously small, but he's very cute. Um, he will eventually be a giant millipede. Be pretty big, actually. Yeah, they get quite big. But obviously, at the moment, he's ridiculous. Look at him. Look at my thumb in comparison. Oh, my thumb's gross. Sorry. Look at my finger. Whoop. So yeah, not, not my proudest moment, I've got to say, but um, I did the same with a tarantula as well. Just I won't show you in case people are freaking out, actually. But um, So I did the same. Oh, there's a locust there, look. I did the same with a tarantula. I bought an Antilles pink toe because um, my first ever tarantula was a pink toe and I absolutely love them. Um, <laughs> um, but he's absolutely diddy, the pink toe. Oh, Colin, close your mouth when you're eating. Rude. See his um, serrated gums there. Oh, yeah, so he hasn't got teeth. You see those little black ridges? They are serrated gums. Uh, uh, uh. Can you see that he, one? He's looking. Well, he's not getting off me. I know, Colin. Let me, um, I, I can put it on my hand to show you. Ooh. Oh, that wasn't very good, was it? Yeah. Right, Colin. Yeah, good shot. So it's got like a sticky substance at the end of their tongue and it's like a bone and it helps to obtain their food. And they, they are, they're quite accurate. They have quite a high... Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, sorry to say, kill rate, a success rate. Yeah, their, success rate, better word. Yeah, yeah success yeah. rate with their... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when they're hunting. Yeah. 
Uh, right, it is 12. We'll just quickly, if we can, what have we got for the goats? Uh, so we've got some locks and um, being the great chef that I am, I've blitzed up um, some veg and some fruit earlier. So oh, well, that sounds delicious. That on the logs, so I think my and Abby's hands are yeah. going to get really dirty. Right, we're going to go and have a quick look. If we lose you, I apologise now and have a lovely week. Um, but, you know, the signal isn't fantastic outside, so we'll just see. Um, so all the logs are outside already. Um, we're just going to head out there now. Look at my roots, honestly. I need to see my hairdresser, Verity, stat. Um, sadly can't right now, can we? But there we go. Um, so we're just heading outside now. Oh, here Delicious. we go. Some pureed delight. What is it? Sweet potato and so stuff. Sweet potato and carrot and that apple. Is celery and apple. Celery and apple, apple sweet so potato. Really a treat. Yeah. yeah. Um, goats. They can have it on the odd occasion because it's quite high in sugar. And um, it can ferment in, in uh, their digestive system. Kind of like so alcohol, isn't it? Yeah, four stomachs. We don't want drunk goats because they're no. always a nightmare, as you know. Imagine yeah. a drunk Andy. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, thank you. Andy's got the gates for us, um, and we'll slather this on. Yeah, so not touching. Absolutely. So these are the logs. You can see they're obviously quite considerably larger than the ones that the um, other animals have in there. Um, so I'll, I'm going to leave these guys to. I mean, that is gross, isn't it? What we do for our animals, eh? Craig, could you give us a taste of that and just uh, if you could taste it for me and tell me what it tastes like? No. Okay, fine. I did try the sweet <sighs> I just can't find dedicated staff anymore, honestly. Um, speaking of staff, actually, um, I, in I had 19 applicants for our job that we had um, up at the moment, um, which is a technic technician demonstrator post, um, which is what Abby is. Um, so we've, yeah, we've been, I interviewed all day Friday and it was really lovely to have so many people say that they've been watching the Facebook Live. Um, so hello to all the candidates that I spoke to um, on the, on webcam on Friday. Um, because that was really lovely. Oh. Oh, we're going to bring, bring them through in here first for safety again. Yeah, we Shout can't. Shout out to Helen. Shout out to Helen. <laughs> yeah, so for safety, we have to make sure we've got a double door system. So this door has to be shut and then this door has to be shut. Um, just to make sure that we... Hello, you sneaky goat. This is Hank. All right, baby. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. So cute, Harry. Hey, Harry. Oh, and then uh, there's... Oh, rude. There's Russ desperate. back there. Russ isn't um, overly friendly. Uh, you can see Bailey and George. Hey, boys. Oh, here's, here's Andy, look. Um, Andy's always ready to headbutt me. Yeah, we're going. Okay, we're going straight outside. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So um, what's happened is, uh, unfortunately, one has escaped. Bailey, you, well, here's all right. Yeah, I couldn't, um, unfortunately, Bailey got through my legs. Hey, Harry, how are you? You're going to miss out. Why don't you come and see what we've got for you? Andy, how are you, mate? Look at that big belly. Look at that big belly. He's a chunky boy. He's a chunky boy. Right, so it's a bit, um, obviously, wet out here because we've had um, lots of rain. Hey, oh. So... There we go. Some going on out here. Yeah. Hey, Hank, Not how are us, you? The goats. <laughs> hey, Ross. Oh, you always look so worried, don't you? Look at this one. This one's got loads of stuff on it. Somebody come over here. Yeah. Andy, you come over here. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Goats are not the most intelligent. They, um, they, I mean, they're clever. They can be trained. They obviously do. But, um, are you? in terms of like curiosity and that's sort of thing. Hi. They use their horns and their mouths. So hopefully they will investigate this in a minute. Mm, do you think maybe we should put one up there? Another just goat. so, oh, Andy, I just don't know why you do it. Why you have to misbehave like that. Yeah, You're just such a monkey. Oh, rub your head on it. Yeah, sweet potato on your head. Great. Oh, look at the state of you. Why? Just stop rubbing your head in it. That's not how you're supposed to use enrichment, honestly. But that's obviously, he hasn't got horns, but that's how no. they usually investigate things. So with their horns and their mouth. Oh, you're going to get it rubbed in your face now. Yeah, I don't mind. Just good boy, George. You have multiple uses, despite what you think it's going to be used for. You Ow. are a good boy. Ow. Did you get nipped? Boxed my hand. Hello, you are a good boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, These you are. The friendly of the two. Of the six. Of the six. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boys. Hey. 
Um, Andy isn't really interested in eating. What he's interested in is hurting Craig. <laughs> oh, Craig. <laughs> he really doesn't like you, does he? Uh, he <laughs> So these three are golden Guernsey, so you can see they look very oh, different. Nice. So very tall, um, these beautiful blonde coats. And um, they're actually bred for producing milk. <laughs> Obviously these are boys. They're ca all of our goats are, are males, they're castrates, which means unfortunately, close your ears people, um, they don't have testicles. They've been castrated. And he's misbehaving. Baby, what do you think of that? You just, oh, look at the state of you. You messy boy. These goats love massages as well. Yeah. I love them. Look, he's gonna go. Get his... Oh yeah. <laughs> I said earlier, so this is like what we're doing now is a really good form of enrichment for these, especially as well. Let's see. Yeah, we like to come sit outside with the goats as well, don't we? Um, especially George and Bailey. You shouldn't have favourites, should you? But look at you, George. Yes. Even with sweet potato all over your chops, you're still the most beautiful goat I've ever seen in my life. Poor Hank, uh, Russ, sorry, look at him, he's just lost. He really just, he's quite low in the pecking order of the um, group and he's a bit unsure. He's not really a, f like a fan of us either. Because he came from a farm, they, their handling would have been very different to us and he probably had limited handling. Whereas these, uh, Hank and Harry, the twins, they came to us at a year old. So they've actually the got state of really you. used to us and Hank loves a little cheek massage. Look at that sweet potato when you try. Russ was a little bit older, so... You know, he's a year older than Hank and Harry, yes, so he's their older brother. Yeah. But you can see now that so Hank is the boss of our herd, and now that Hank's moved out of the way, he's like, oh, I've got permission now. I can go and have a look. Um, Ophelia wants to know why don't some have horns? Well, unfortunately, um, George and Bailey, we um, <laughs> we rehomed them from a really lovely lady called Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne, if you're watching, um, and um. When you have goats, when they're young, you can have them uh, debudded or disbudded, which means you can have their horns removed. <laughs> um, <awesome>. So, <laughs> so uh, Bailey and George have had their horns removed. Bailey, I don't know if you can see on top of his head, but Bailey's still got a like unicorn. a little nubbin. Haven't you? Got a little nub. Um, whereas okay. the Golden Guernseys have got these really beautiful... Oh, please do rub yourself on me. I'd love more sweet potato on my cloves. Thank you so much. It's really important to keep their horns because it's a form of communication. Yeah. So that, that's what they use to communicate with each other and that's what they use to... We all kind of wish Andy didn't have horns, yeah. though. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, I'm talking about you. you. Oh, bless you. So, yeah, this is great for them. So busy trying to... Hi, Harry. ...that you didn't even food on there. No. You missed out. Here uh, Andy is Andy thinks he's the boss, but unfortunately yes. not. Hi, mate. But he loves Hello, you. Oh, oh, all go up in my face. All go up in my face. Hey. Okay. So I think that's it today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today um, again for a lovely um, episode of Animal Centre Live. Um, we'll be coming back to you next week. We haven't decided on our topic yet, actually. So if you want to get in contact and let us know um, if there's anything you want to learn, um, you know, Craig, Abby and myself will be here again next week. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unless Craig gets headbutted into oblivion by... Uh, Andy. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Please stay safe. Make sure you stay inside. Keep Bye. everybody safe. Um, and we'll see you again soon. Oh, that's good <laughs> Bye. Bye.